Welcome back to the Ultimate New Zealand Road Trip. If you haven't seen episode zero or episode one yet, I'll link them on screen now. Before we get started, let's just remind everyone about the stats, shall we? $426.60 total trip costs so far, and a saving of 1036 That's not bad, let's try and keep that saving going, shall we? In today's episode, I'm heading up to Pinkton and getting the ferry across to Wellington. Day four, I'm driving all the way to New Plymouth, stopping in a couple of hidden gems, including New Zealand's own Lonely Mountain, before going to the Festival of Lights on Mari New Year. Day five, I'll be driving across to Taupo and doing the AJ Hackett Bungee, visiting Hooker Falls and the Craters of the Moon, and more. And then finally, ending the episode with Rotorua, all ready for part three. So before heading out, I got the van ready to go and cleaned and even emptied the gray water for the first time. Luckily with just me here, I don't have to change the water over every single day. It's just, you know, when I have access to a station, I might as well use it. I then headed back into Blenheim just to get my fridge magnet, which turns out they're cheaper and more reliably sourced from Paper Plus. Sort of, you know, if you're interested. And Paper Plus might have become my new favorite picking up these magnets because it looks like they sell for a lot cheaper than touristy stores. And then finally I was ready to go and hit the road up the hill. Here right now in Picton, it's actually getting a bit nippy. So I'm here a little bit early. I kind of underestimated how long it was going to be to get here. It's now 10 o'clock and boat check-in is at 1.15. I'm going to have to find something to do for the next three hours. So to kill some time, I went for a drive around the town centre and went to some wacky tacky touristy shops. One more magnet for the collection. I also got a hoodie and a t-shirt for sorry. I think that'll do for tacky touristy shops for the rest of the day. Then I visited the Picton Overlook and had a coffee. Ooh. Yeah, I'm really getting used to this van life thing. Then I killed some time being a little bit childish. It is a tad bit cold, middle of winter. Then I bought some chips and dramatically underestimated how much I would get for $4. And then went and checked into the ferry. Also, side note, waiting to board a ferry in a camper van is just superior to waiting in a car. Until finally, we were allowed to board the ferry. The Inter Islander Ferry has multiple indoor seating areas, naturally all the best seats are taken, and a food court-esque cafe. Another cafe, and a mini cafe, along with an indoor observation area, a premium lounge, and a lower deck viewing platform that circumferences the back and sides of the ship. And on the top floor, they've got an open air viewing platform. This was much more me. <sighs> Unfortunately, the weather ain't improving. There goes Picton, and now we're off through the Marlborough Sounds. I actually kind of like it like this, it's kind of mystical. And I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. I mean, it's an experience, isn't it? I didn't count how many people came on board, but it turns out there's only one person stupid enough to be up on the observation deck outdoors. That's me. <laughs> we are dreamers of the shore. This is us now leaving the Marlborough Sounds and entering the Cook Strait. But funnily enough, the weather has cleared up a little bit. <laughs> you can just start to see the makings of the North Island on the horizon there. Very well, South Island. 
kilometers on the left hand side. Thank you. Oh. They're closing the observation decks because of how dangerous it is. Once we come around that headland back there, the water calmed down something quickly. Now, this is us now coming into Wellington Harbour. It's amazing how much warmer it is once that wind drops too. Welcome to Wellington, capital city, windy Wellington, welly wood, wacky, windy Wellington, wonderful Wellington, uh, the wombles of Wellington, no that's not right, that's definitely not right, um, just Wellington, whatever, welcome to Wellington, woohoo! Everything's ready to go, good. Right. Yeah. Managed to get in to Wellington and I stayed with my brother and his partner. Now I know technically I didn't stay at a campsite last night, I actually got a nice comfortable warm bed and a really nice cup of coffee for this morning's breakfast. That's not something that you can really plan for on a road trip if you're doing it conventionally because obviously you need to have family in the area but there is a free campsite that's down by the waterfront, quite a nice little spot and it is free for non-self-contained vehicles. That's, that's the option for the free campsite for the night. This is probably going to be the longest stretch of road that I have to do on this trip will be this one so I'm gonna do just a quick driving tour but I need to be in New Plymouth tonight Woohoo! okay we're off quick brief driving tour of Wellington train station that is the waterfront this bridge is actually really cool so this is Tipapa Museum I'm not a huge fan of museums like I say but like I find this one particularly cool this is like the center shopping district of Wellington. It's also the home of the iconic bucket fountain. The old bank shopping arcade. Ah, Willis Lane. I think that's the underground food court area. Also, these M&Ms or Smarties and a stick or whatever. They're pretty cool too. The Wellington Cable Car. There it is. And last up on our little road tour of Wellington is the Beehive Parliament Building. And that concludes the brief driving tour of Wellington. Very brief, unfortunately. It's quite nice to stop with my brother and his partner again. Kind of consider that to be the last homely house north of the Cook Strait. Places I've never been But you can walk through this world without a few punches upon your chin so I just pulled into Parapara Umu to top up at the mobile here and when I was driving down the street I noticed that mobile has $2.78 but BP right across the road has $2.64 so even with the eight cents a liter discount that I got from the van rental it actually works out cheaper just to go to BP instead I've got a long way to go and I figured it was best to just top it up now rather than trying to look for a place when I'm a little bit more desperate perhaps. <laughs> So the first point of interest on my road north is the town with the punniest name. So we're now in the town of Bulls, which is a lovely short name for a town I feel. And it's adorned with a lot of these statues of bulls. A lot of them. <laughs> They've obviously got quite a bond with their name because half the places are called Bulls. Relievable washroom. If one's had one too many cappuccinos, it's a lovely place to stop and, and relieve oneself of one's bladorial burden. I really like how they've thrown themselves into the name of bull. Half the places are called bull or some sort of pun involving the word bull. There's like a kind of crude humor behind a lot of it, obviously. What a load of bull, unbelievable. Silly little puns and stuff. 
It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I like it. I like it. I just came over a little bend in the road and I've just spotted Mount Taranaki for the first time. It looks absolutely incredible. It looks like the lonely mountain. The camera doesn't do it justice. Next up on our free points of interest is a statue to a local hero. This is a Jack Russell Terrier called George, and in my opinion, he's an unsung hero. This brave little Jack Russell gave his life to defend a group of children from two savage pit bulls. I think it's just like a little Jack Russell Terrier, how tenacious and brave and courageous they can be. I absolutely love this statue, this is fantastic. Always wanted to come and see George. Ever since I read about this, I wanted to come and see him. Good boy, absolute good boy. Shitty car, but we hit the road. Doesn't matter where we go and destination unknown. I don't care where the motor stops. Cause when I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it. Third free point of interest is in the town of Stratford, which is just to the east of Mount Taranaki. There's an odd little curiosity that I wanted to come here and see. So this little artwork behind me is the Glockenspiel clock tower. Or a Glockenspiel, if you will. The Glockenspiel artwork was made by a fella called Nigel Ogle. And four times a day, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 7 o'clock, it plays out the love vows of Romeo and Juliet. What's in a name? They would be called a rose by any other name. It smells sweet. Farewell, one kiss, and I'll just say it. So yeah, there it is, the Glockenspiel, Glockenspiel of Stratford. Next on our road to find free things, we have Kent Road, which is one of New Zealand's most Instagrammable spots. Chances are, if you've Googled pictures of New Zealand before, this is one of the images you're gonna see, Kent Road, where it lines up perfectly with uh, Mount Taranaki. Now, this is a great spot for Instagram, social media, that sort of thing, but it is still an active road. In fact, just there, there's a couple of crosses, Tourist 1 and Tourist 2. I couldn't find any genuine cases of people being killed on Kent Road, but locals are worried it's only a matter of time. It is a 100 km an hour limited road, and some tourists have taken to laying on the road or setting up tripods to get the ultimate photo. So if you do come to Kent Road for a picture, please use some common sense. Well, this is us now in New Plymouth. Pretty much where I want to be for today. Come to New Plymouth for a light festival, which coincides with Maori New Year called Matariki. So this big, long stick behind me is a wind wand. It was made by a gentleman called Len Lai, and it's just a giant 48 meter fiberglass pole. So it's quite nice actually, because it gets the Tasman Sea breezes and stuff off of the side there, because we're on the coast, and it just bends and flexes with all the, the wind. Quite a simple design, but very effective, I think. Just a big, long, bendy stick. You can kind of see it moving. It's not very windy right now. And in honor of the occasion, the fridge magnet I got for New Plymouth is called Namotu. Namotu being the Maori name for New Plymouth. So sorting out my accommodation for tonight, I got a powered campsite at Fitzroy Beach Holiday Park. I also got a Fitzroy Beach magnet too, because why not? It was a great little spot, almost on the beach. Great campsite, really clean, tidy facilities, friendly staff. Very clean facility, almost too clean. With a few hours to spare, I decided to just watch the sunset until it was time to go back into town for the light festival. The Light Festival was free entry. There was a lot of food and drinks, including mulled wine, and cider, and mulled apple juice, because, well, I'm driving. There were lots of interactive light shows, and lights synced to the music. After taking it all in, I decided to head back to the campsite, via picking up pizza, getting a few more supplies, 
and feeling up the van. Well, good morning everyone. It's now officially day five of the Great New Zealand road trip. This morning I got up and had a lovely walk on the beach and took in the lovely New Plymouth skyline. It's a shame we've got to be going. I've really kind of grown accustomed to seeing the lonely mountain in the background. And there's a couple more spots that I wanted to check out here, but unfortunately, tight schedule to keep and I need to be in Taupo by today. Actually, no, I need to be in Rotorua today. I need to be in Rotorua via Taupo. So yeah, better hit the road. I've come down here to the AJ Hackett bungee in Taupo. Kiwis have this strange enjoyment of jumping off of perfectly sound and structured buildings. <laughs> there have been bungee before, but as part of the Great Kiwi experience, and because this is supposed to be the ultimate New Zealand road trip, I better partake in it, I guess. Eesh. I did a thing, I did a thing. My heart is still freaking racing. I'm sure when you watch the footage back, you'll see that I managed to do that in the most confident and graceful and James Bond-esque style. Probably not. If you are gonna get the media package to view yourself doing the jump and stuff, I recommend that you do it after your second or third one because I must look like a bit of an idiot, so. Yeah, that was good though, it was good. So, um, now that that's over and my hand has now officially stopped shaking, um, I think it's time that I go and get some lunch, and I have a bit of a treat in store for lunch. McDonald's airplane. Apparently it used to be an old passenger plane, then it was a crop duster or something, and then it ended up in the McDonald's parking lot. And now it's just a feature of it. It's quite an unusual feature. I mean, of all things that you'd have in your McDonald's car park would be an airplane. But it's pretty iconic on Taupo now. And obviously a quirky little attraction like that. I had to come and have a look at it. That's pretty weird. And definitely worth the visit. The McDonald's airplane in Taupo. Pretty much the only reason I came to McDonald's anyway was to see that. <laughs> then I went for a walk around the town, down to the lake, and the love Taupo sign. And the hole in one challenge, but it was busy and I'm terrible at golf, so I didn't have a go. You know, I've been to quite a few places on my trip so far, but this definitely is the most touristy one. There's also a lot of decorative sculptures and things to see around the town. And I also had to get a Taupo magnet, of course. There we go. Quite the collection I've got going on now. I think it's about time now that we start heading up towards Rotorua. It's about an hour's drive. There's a couple of spots that I wanted to stop at on the way up there. Uh, bear with. Can't get more Kiwi, a Moro bar and a V. I'm sure there's people who will argue that there are more Kiwi things than that, but like, I just jumped off a thing. I think I get to pick what I think is appropriate at this particular moment in time. Anyway, thank you, Tapo. I will always remember that bungee jump. The next stop on my road to Rotorua is Hooka Falls. The problem is though, that there were so many tourists that parking would have been a nightmare, especially in the bulky van. Thankfully though, shortly up the road there was a parking spot just a 15 minute walk away from the falls. Which meant not only did I not have to fight for a parking spot, but I also got a lovely walk out of it too. I'm just here for the ride, okay? Here comes a double vision. Does Megan Fox have a twin or something? Might be the Prozac kicking in, but she tossed her drink in my face and I didn't even flinch. Had been busy. 
The falls were gorgeous, but a little bit touristy for my liking. Sorry. After making my way back to the car, I went to the next destination on my road north, the Craters of the Moon. Now the walking track is a 45 minute loop. I'm pretty sure me walking by myself, I'll be able to do it in less than 45 minutes. Whoa, there's that sulfur smell though. I think it'd be kind of fun to go along on these, on like a little e-scooter or something. So that's, that's the main mud pool here. You know, I'm kind of expecting it to be more bubbly and, you know, muddy. Maybe it's just too cold. The surface is kind of hardened or something. If you lean right over the edge of the rail here just a little bit, you can kind of see right there where all of the gases are escaping from one of the holes in the rock. Insert fart gag here. But that is the craters of the moon. <laughs> and then there were more. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have any more time left to check out anywhere else in Taupo. It has been exceptionally fun, but now it's definitely time that I head on up to Rotorua. Well, that was jammy. Kind of touch and go there whether or not I was going to make it. Well, there you have it. A full tank of petrol in down the van is $140. All righty then. So I'm now in Holden's Bay Holiday Park. Nothing really else to do for the rest of the day. This means I can kind of get an early night. However, because I'm in Rotorua now, I've only got one hour's drive from here to Matamata tomorrow, which means I've got more time tomorrow to fit in lots and lots of good activities. Like, I'm gonna be doing the Zorbing, I'm gonna do the Skyline Skyrides, Luge, and hopefully the zip line. Hopefully. And additional to that, I am looking into options for what I can do for the rest of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I can't believe it's almost over. I've only got two days left. Anyway, be good to yourselves. See you in the next one.